Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys tracking and keyframes inside of the color tab of DaVinci Resolve 14. So the tracker is a really awesome tool where whenever you have a character, a person, a car, whatever, moving around in your clip, you can have the power windows we talked about in the previous video, um, which is where you can carve out part of the screen to be affected by color effects or a blur, like we'll kind of talk a bit more about today. And uh, with the tracker, you can have those windows automatically move around as the character it's tracking moves so that, for instance, if you put it on a person's face, that person's face will always be affected by the color effect or the blur effect or whatever effect you have going on there. So I'll demonstrate it really quick here uh, with an example I played around with for a little while and then I'll set one up so that you guys can see how it works. Now, um, the tracker has five different parameters that it can track, pan, tilt, zoom, rotate, and 3D. Presumably, the more you add in, the better the tracking or the more realistic the tracking would be under ideal circumstances. I do find that disabling 3D uh, not only simplifies the shapes that the uh, power window will try to conform to, but also drastically reduces the amount of time it takes for the tracker to automatically but it also drastically reduces the amount of time it takes for the tracker to plot all of these points out uh, where it's following the person inside of the clip. So for this tutorial, I think I'm just gonna leave 3D off, but pan, tilt, zoom, and rotate, those are all fine. Um, so let's go ahead and play this clip and you'll notice that the circle is going to track the person's face and I have a blur effect attached to it. So as the clip goes on, it, uh, it keeps moving. Now, you, you may have saw that there was a janky point where I actually set a keyframe in order to kind of manually correct the positioning of the power window. Um, now, I could have done it a lot better there, uh, but the idea behind setting keyframes is that you can manually set how something should look up. Now, to explain what the purpose of the keyframe there was, um, in the original tracking, when it got to around this point, there was a spot where the tracking got a little bit off center from the base and it didn't look quite good. So you can set up a manual keyframe, basically how it should look in the exact moment you set that keyframe up for. And the automatic tracking that you uh, have going by hitting plus will try to track the face between keyframes. So if you only have one keyframe or no keyframe set for the entire clip, It'll just keep going, it'll keep trying to track, but eventually it may run into problems, and that's why you would add in a keyframe. So in this case, the keyframe is where in this clip it's starting to get off-center, and I move it manually back onto the person's face right there to kind of self-correct it. Ideally, that would have probably been done a little bit better. Uh, maybe I would set the keyframe a few frames earlier because it was already starting to get off-kilter. Uh, but you get the idea, hopefully. So in this new clip, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to show you to set up the tracker, uh, add a couple keyframes in at the key moments where things change drastically and it actually needs that manual input. And I'll show you the blur tab briefly. So in order for the tracker to work, we want to add in a power window, which as you saw in the previous video, can either be uh, rectangular shapes, circles, polygons, curves, or gradients. But because this is a person's face, most likely a circular oval shape is going to be the ideal one to track the person's face. So I'm going to click this, and uh, with this power window circle, I'm going to drag it onto the person's face, and I'm going to conform it to the size and shape of his face. Okay, so that's not too bad of a shape for his face in this exact moment. So what we're going to do is set up a keyframe here. So I can do that over in this keyframes box. Uh, if you check the diamonds, then it'll basically have recording keyframes where whenever you change any detail, it's going to automatically insert a keyframe into that point. Uh, for right now, I'm going to turn that off though, because I don't want to accidentally add in extra keyframes. Instead, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to add a dynamic keyframe for both corrector and sizing. Okay, one more thing uh, I should have mentioned really. Uh, when you do add keyframes, uh, by basically right-clicking and adding a keyframe to everything in corrector one or everything in sizing one, that means that those keyframes are going to affect all of those different attributes. But for corrector one, 
I guess really we only needed a uh, circle win. But what was also being affected here uh, by default is these other things like color corrector and defocus and miscellaneous isolation. Um, now somewhere in here is actually the keyframes for those blur effects. So you see as we go on uh, that basically we only had the blur effect set up at keyframe one, but we didn't have it set up over here. So the blur effect phase uh, phases out over time. And uh, what we want to do is uh, basically take all of these keyframes and we can just delete them because we want the blur effect to remain there for the entire video. So now as you can see, as we scroll on uh, for this video, the blur effect remains because the keyframes for them have been removed. Uh, the only question is getting the power window circle to line up properly so that it's blurring the character's face out at all proper times. So now I'm going to kind of go on in the clip and we're going to find some areas where it changes drastically. Uh, maybe right around here actually and I'm going to well, actually, I'll set the recording frames here so I don't actually have to manually right click and add a frame in. Instead, what I can do is I can just reshape it. So I'm going to do that. And then the keyframe is set there. And we'll go on a little bit more in the clip and we'll see where it gets really out of shape. Okay, so here would be a good part, place for a keyframe. So I'm going to right click, add a dynamic keyframe, make sure this one for both of them. And actually, I forgot to have one for sizing there. So I'll add one for sizing just to be thorough. And now because the person's face moves a lot from this previous keyframe to right around here, I'm going to reposition it. So shift and drag. Uh, now you'll notice that the sizing doesn't change. It, it's only adding a keyframe for corrector, which I guess is fine because I'm not actually resizing the power window, uh, just the position of it. But uh, I'll add a keyframe in there too for the sizing anyway. Now, as things are standing right now, it, it's going to kind of automatically scale between these different keyframes. But it, it's very much human generated. Um, and as on a frame by frame basis, it doesn't look quite right. So that's where tracking is going to come in. So for tracking, I can go back to the starter keyframe. And I just check the details where I want it to automatically track on. I'm going to leave everything checked but 3D. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play. So it's, it's almost magical. And then what you want to make sure is checked is interactive mode down here where it'll allow the auto tracker to be taking place. I'm going to hit plus and it's going to automatically track that shape to the person's head for those two key frames. So now if we play it, the actual shape for that is a lot better which is great. So now we can go to the second keyframe, just hit plus. Oh, and I am also going to uncheck the auto keyframes because I don't want it to accidentally insert one. So between each of the keyframes, we just get on the keyframe and we start hitting plus and it's going to track between the two points. So I'm going to position it right on that keyframe, track forward, and it tracks up to the last keyframe. And now we can just play the whole thing. So just by having the tracker run for a little while, it's automatically moving around as the person's face moves, uh, scaling as it needs to um, in reference to the person's face or its size as it's appearing on the camera. The shape changes, the tilt changes. It looks a lot better than if I had manually tried to add in a bunch of keyframes. And as you can see, when it basically runs out of tracking, it just kind of gets stuck there. I could add in more keyframes and keep doing this process of um, adding in a keyframe and tracking between those two points. So I'll do it one more time here. So here I'm going to automatically track one more time. Okay, so uh, hopefully you get the idea there. Uh, obviously the more keyframes you set, um, it's going to improve the overall uh, shapes and sizes of the tracking because as your time goes on, it might get a little bit bent out of shape or the character in question may change so dramatically that it can't track it quite properly. But having the tracking feature there allows it to get those minute details a lot better than a human hand could. Now all three of these tools kind of use the same um, actual settings except that well when you switch to sharpen it enables some stuff and when you switch to mist it disables core softness but it adds on mix. 
And I guess that would allow you to get different results. So here with the basic blur, if you wanted to blur out a lot, you would just take the radius and bump that up. Uh, but likewise, you could actually bring it down to the bottom and you would effectively get kind of a sharpen effect. Uh, but I guess they intend if you actually want to sharpen that you would switch to sharpen and then you can actually uh, have access to scaling and coring softness. So with coring softness uh, and, and the level, these are both basically the same setting but uh, different attributes of it. Um, you can take the sharpened image and then smooth it out again. So if I add on coring softness and level, uh, coring softness basically being the amount of softness and then level being the intensity of it. So to actually take this tracked person and to add a blur effect onto the power window, uh, we would simply go to the next tab here where you have access to blur, sharpen, and mist. Um, kind of very similar in what they do, except they give you access to different uh, basically settings, you can scale up and down to get the exact result you want. Uh, but since we're just trying to blur it out here, I'm going to just leave it at blur where we have horizontal vertical ratio. Basically, do you want it to blur more across the horizontal axis or the vertical axis? And then the radius, if we scale this up to the top, we get a very, very thick. But if we scale it down to the bottom, it, it's almost as if we had just used sharpen instead of blur uh, because it actually sharpens up the image. Whereas if we leave it at 0.5, it doesn't change anything. It's just how it was originally. So in this case, we want to bump up the blur so that the person's face isn't visible. Um, so setting that at a high radius. So setting that at a high radius, which can actually go above one, is gonna give you the result you want. So I don't actually want it that intense. So I'm just gonna leave it somewhere about uh, 0.9. And now as we play the clip, the blur should, roughly speaking, follow around the person's face. Um, I would say, though, if you're actually doing this for a final project, you'd probably want to spend a little bit more time here getting it right with the keyframing and the tracking. Um, it's just kind of one of those things where you have to change something a little bit and then play it and see if you get it right and then keep going with that process. So uh, at least as a very basic test for this tracking, keyframing, and blur effect. It doesn't seem too bad at the moment. So your final result should look something like this, where a uh, person's face is blurred out, and as it actually tracks the person's face, it's going to remain blurred. Of course, you could also do other things like change the color of the thing you're tracking, if that's what you desire. Kind of uh, whatever floats your boat. So that's how you use tracking, keyframes, and the blur effect at a basic level inside of the color tab of DaVinci Resolve 14. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys, and I will see you in my future video content.